Knicks fans and welcome back to Inside NARC as we get ready for the Maury Williams Memorial at King Speedway in Hanford, California on Saturday, September 30th. This is a unique event honoring the late Maury Williams in which not one but two main events will be ran. And in this episode we have three special guests, NARC 410 Sprint Car Series point leader Corey Day, NARC 410 Sprint Car Series general manager Jim Allen, and the winner of the first ever main event for the Maury Williams Memorial back in 2020, Kyle Hurst, who did it in a Williams Motorsports entry. That's coming up. Corey Day, you're the defending Maury Williams Memorial champion. It's a unique event with two features on the same day. King Speedway, you've been really fast there this year, and I know that you got to be really excited for the NARC 410 series to be firing back up. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we're leading points with NARC, and, um, by a good margin too. And, you know, to be going to Hanford as our next race, you know, gets me excited to, to hopefully, you know, be as, uh, as consistent and as good as we have been there this year and, uh, hopefully extend our points lead a little bit more. Well, he's been tracking all across the country, but it's great to be back because it wouldn't be a NARC event without Jim Allen and Jim boy, the Maury Williams Memorial King Speedway. It's, it's getting that time of the year where things are starting to kind of sort of wind down, but no doubt that these teams are, are excited to be back at Hanford and no doubt for a great cause for, for the Williams family. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, yeah, we're at the fourth annual event here for honoring the uh, late uh, legendary Maury Williams, one of the nicest people as far as car owners and racers on the planet. And uh you know, whatever it's one of those it's one of those feel good events and uh you know ashley smith and katie williams have uh you know they step up and uh, uh supplement the purse and uh the trophies for this thing are absolutely uh awesome and the format is different with uh two 20 lap main events and uh you know uh for all the diehard sprint car fans out there who complain oh the fast guys start in the front and all that other good stuff uh Man, that second feature event when they completely invert the field, um, except for the lap traffic, um, always makes for an exciting uh, race, and you can see who can uh, charge from the back. No doubt. I mean, it it really a big plot twister, and just because you just because you didn't win the first one doesn't mean your night's over. And we saw that last year with Jonathan Allard, and no doubt a a sentimental favorite and and basically a tearjerker of a feature by getting the job done last year in the second feature. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that is exactly uh, that that would be a perfect description. It was a tearjerker. Uh, you know, it just had yeah, a lot of sentimental value and uh uh, I remember talking to Jonathan after the event. He goes, man, I'm gassed. He says, you know, I said, I knew all these young guys were coming. And, uh, man, I'm just so glad, you know, that he could uh, win one uh, in honor of Maury. So, um, yeah, and obviously they're going to try to do it again this year. Yeah, yeah. And, and Maury, you, you touched on it. Maury was so integral about supporting, no matter what it was called, but, you know, the NARC 410 Sprint Series. And, and even back in the 90s, a, a huge supporter when NARC and Golden State were coexisting with each other. Um, he made sure that a team, and there was actually a period of time where a couple teams were fielded there between Jonathan and Dennis Moore Jr. Um, exactly. Well, Mark, I'm going to share something that I don't think a lot of people know. So when, uh, you know, so I was, uh, you know, with the Northern Racing Club and um, I left in, uh, you know, basically after the 1999 season. And then uh, the organization made it one more year and then they kind of went belly up. And then the King of the West was kind of kicked up or the King of the California. It was the King of something mm -hmm. um, at the time. And uh, when Brent taught me into coming back to the series in 2017, you know, he says, you know, things haven't really, you know, been, you know, the same um, without you here and, you know, NARC. And I said, well, you know, NARC is a completely different organization. I mean, NARC was Northern Auto Racing Club with emphasis on the club. And so when I came back, I don't know, I was just in passing, and I think I was in Hanford, and Maury kind of pulled me over and, uh, you know, said, uh, you know, hey, Jim, what's your – What's your plan? And I sort of had one, but I wasn't sure how it was going to, uh, uh, how it was going to pan out. But he says, do me a favor. He says, write a business plan of what you want to see this thing do and, uh, you know, in five years and then bring it to me. And then, uh, if there's any cost associated with it, let me know and I'll be glad to help out. 
So I did exactly that. And uh, Maury, um, you know, wrote a check to kind of get a couple things in place. And, uh, you know, now we're, you know, we're back to the Northern Auto Racing Club. And the plan is, uh, you know, long after, you know, I uh, decide I don't want to uh, do this and, you know, go fishing or whatever I'm going to do, um, that the club will continue on for, uh, you know, decades uh, to come. So, you know, Maury was, you know, he was a true diehard narc loyalist car owner and uh he wanted that uh feeling and that club atmosphere back and uh i don't know let's say he put his money where his mouth is and it's a honor to uh get it to where it is today awesome yeah i know talking with ashley smith in one of the maury williams tribute uh, episodes i did earlier this week he Ashley emphasized that Maury was a huge supporter of Four Tens. Four Tens was 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 uh, was their jam, so to speak. Absolutely, yeah. He uh, uh, Maury just kind of said, you know, hey, if you if, you know everything that's not Four Ten Sprint cars is the you know the the D League or the Farm League or whatever, and you know I don't know, you know, uh, Maury didn't have a, a mean bone in his body, and he probably didn't mean anything derogatory on it, but you know, he just said, hey, you know, if we're going to do this, you know, hey, let, let's uh, play like the big boys, and uh, you know, if you're going to make it on the national stage, you know, you're you're not going to get it uh, in a quote unquote race saver class, and uh, you know, and then all of a sudden be you know racing for some top car owner in the Knoxville Nationals. Which is a great segue. Nark, you know, we, we haven't had a race since July 15th, Ocean Speedway for uh, Howard Cading Classic. But there's been a lot as far as Nark-centric drivers that have happened. Uh, we've had drivers do very well in the Midwest. Uh, Corey Day making the final night of the Knoxville Nationals. California just dominating the top 10 in the final night. And then Corey Day winning the Gold Cup. Uh, Justin Sanders finishing second, Dominic Selzy, a third place effort at the Tom Tarleton Classic. I mean, even though some of these drivers haven't raced with, with NARC, so to speak, they have just been stepping up to the first division. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know. You, you kind of get that uh, super proud feeling, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever, kind of, kind of a dad feeling, you know, hey, sure. that's my kid right there. <laughs> yeah. And look, at you know, he, he's doing, he's running with the big boys and, yeah. Uh, yeah, you just look at, uh, you know, everybody, you know, I mean, including the outliers, just the, the, the talent that's uh, coming out of California, you know, and these days, uh, you know, might be the only good thing coming out of California. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, uh, we definitely are, uh, our guys, you know, Buddy Kofoid and, I mean, you know, Brad, all these guys are, you know, from from the Golden State. And then, like you said, you know, Dominic and, I mean, Cole Macedo is looking good. Yeah. Um, you know, Corey Day, I mean, uh Hey, we we got some superstars here, and good news is uh, California fans get to see them on Saturday. Absolutely. So that that you you said it best. Come on down, Maury Williams Memorial, and and you know to go with complaining about uh, you know people just starting from the front. Also, people complain there's not enough racing. There's going to be plenty of racing Saturday night too with twin features. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, they get uh, those uh, after the first race. Basically, we're going to interview the top three. And uh, as soon as that winner gets out of the car, we start a 10-minute time clock. So all the cars, you get to see them doing whatever adjustments they uh, possibly can during those 10 minutes uh, in the infield. And uh, one thing they cannot do is they cannot change a tire. If they do change a tire, they automatically go to the back of the pack. So um, it's not like, you know, they all get to sit around and, uh, oh, we got an hour before the next event. I mean, they got to get focused um you know get those tear offs loaded on the helmet again and then they're good to go awesome well jim it's always great catching up with you i can't wait for this weekend and uh i'm uh it's going to be something special that's for sure i totally agree so uh hopefully uh, all you race fans uh, listen to this right now hope to see you all on saturday at the maury wins memorial well, one of the drivers that was in the Fame Williams Motorsports team was Kyle Hurst. And Kyle, you uh, you you get the call up uh, to drive for Maureen Katie Williams, and that had to be definitely one of the most special phone calls that you've you've gotten in your career. Yeah, it was an honor. You know, you I raced against the zero car for a lot of my career. I uh, grew up knowing Maury and Jonathan, and just everyone that drove the zero car, Peter Murphy. And to add my name to that list and become part of their family and drive with them was pretty special. And 
um, we enjoyed, I enjoyed, definitely enjoyed my time with racing with him. And not only did you drive for him, you guys won for him. Um, it, and something that had been so special was the first year they had the Maury Williams Memorial. You you won one of the one of the twin features, and that had to be just a, a very emotional thing. Yeah, you know we you know we won some races right out the gate, but that one you knew you definitely had to lay it on the line, um, just for how special it meant and um, how important it was to have one on the team and Katie and uh, we actually had to drive around Facendo coming out of four and kind of a sketchy pass, but I knew it was worth it to try to get the job done. And so that's what we did. And it was one of those races, you know, I'll forget a lot of them over the years, but that was definitely one I'll never forget. And growing up as a kid in California and seeing through the years, all the, all the great names that have ran. And, you know, there's, there's, there's some iconic teams that have come from Californian iconic drivers what was it like growing up and watching the Williams Motorsports team throughout the years, even before you were a driver? Oh, like I said, I remember them as a kid and uh, watching the Zero Cargo growing up and then racing against it. Once I you know, turned 16 and started racing sprint cars, that Zero Cargo would come from Elkhurst to Chico every Friday night when they ran weekly and then go wherever they had to after that, whether it was Polari or Hanford, Stoga, they would be there that Friday and then go wherever they need to be on Saturday, you know, Maury loved racing. Um, <clears throat> I, you know, I wish I would have got to race while he was there, but I was around him enough and got to say hi to him and spend time with him. He would wheel that truck to every racetrack and then put his overalls on and help the guys work on the car and do whatever he need be. Um, but yeah, that zero car just, he loved racing and they loved racing and that's what they did. And, um, they had a lot of success over the years. I mean, dirt cup was the zero cars, uh, ATM for many years, you knew go up there and you knew you had to beat them. Um, so just, yeah, a very special team. Uh, one of the few, you know, you think of, we ranked up there and to the top California teams that was around over the years. So a uh, very special drive for them and just, man, what a great team. And it's cool to see them still going. What was one of your favorite interactions with Maury or favorite Maury story that you think that you could tell? Man, I don't, you know, he was always, very quiet and just went about his way. I don't know if I have any really cool stories about him. I just, like I said, I always remember him driving the truck. And I guess my favorite thing would be his overalls. I always, <laughs> you know, when wearing that one piece overall, working on the race car, whether it was 115 or 60 degrees out. Um, but yeah, that's the one thing that always sticks out to me when I think of Maury. When, when you got, when you're in the ride, you're, you're in the fame zero car and you have, you know, you have basically the descendants of, or still that, that team, that whole team just stayed together despite everything that happened. It seems like the common theme that I have received from interviewing so many people is no matter how long you were in that car for that you were a part of their family. No, absolutely. I mean, that's just how it was. It was a very tight knit team. And, um, Katie's just absolutely wonderful. And I mean, I still see, I saw our gold cup this year and I made it a point to walk down out of the tire shack and go give her a big old hug and tell her hi. And, you know, I raced with them for two years, but you just, people that you race with, they, you know, they take chances on you driving their car. And, um, they obviously think a lot of you for being able to trust you to drive their car. So, um, the special connection you make being a driver and car owners and crew members and crew chiefs and everything. So, um, but yeah, definitely they're one of those teams that is like that. Um, I'll always make it a point to go, you know, say hi to Ashley and Chig and Doug and, uh, go give Katie that hug every time I see her. And I, I get the consensus too, that, that working with Ashley and, and, uh, all the members of the team that were there at the time, it was a very low stress level. It was, you're here to work, you're here to get the job done, but you, you, you're not having a blazing fire under your feet. No, yeah, I mean, it, I don't know if it was just the timing of me not running full-time and stuff like that, but I don't know how it always was there. But, yeah, definitely us. We were, you know, a limited schedule, um, just running a few races a year, and it was. We just went and had fun every time, and it wasn't like your points racing or anything like that. We just went and tried to win races, and, you know, if we had a bad night, it wasn't that big a deal. We struck it off and went out and tried to win the next one. But um, definitely always smiles around the camp, and we always had a good time. And that seems to just breed 
a healthy environment. Because, I mean, stuff happens, right? Their tensions can get high easily, but when everyone's kind of relaxed and in good spirits, that does nothing but benefit the situation. Well, absolutely. I mean, that's the hardest part about this mental sport of racing is keeping a positive attitude. It's, it's definitely not easy when you're not running good. And, um, yeah, that's the hard. I mean, that's, that we've seen a lot of people talk about it over the last couple of years or, you know, this year and stuff and having a good attitude and everyone being positive is probably the best thing that can happen in racing. But sometimes you just have that bad luck streak or, um, you know, stuff doesn't go your way and you don't run good, but they definitely never put the pressure on or anything like that. It was just go have fun and go racing. And, um, we did that every time we went out. Well, Kyle, I'm glad that you got an opportunity to be in such a historic ride and you had some success and I appreciate you also, uh, taking some time and telling us some of, some of your times with, with the Williams team. No problem. All. I appreciate it. And I hope it's uh, another great weekend. It just seems like that event keeps growing. Uh, every year and <clears throat> I uh, wish him nothing but success on the race and hopefully it's a good showing. Well, that is going to do it for this interview. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and hit the like and subscribe button on whatever platform you found this interview at it really helps us grow the channel and we greatly appreciate it. In the meantime, we'll be back with more content and interviews in the future. Be sure and have a great evening or a great rest of your day, whatever time you're listening.